and please give a huge round of applause for the very, very funny Joe Jackson. <laughs> Uh, just to clear things up, my name is Roger Bach, so let's start there and give it up for your host, uh, Garage. Anyway, cool. What's up, guys? How you feeling? Are you, good? Are you feeling good? Yeah! Lovely, lovely. Love to see you all. Lovely to be here. Thank you guys so much. Give a huge round of applause to the bar staff and keeping you guys licking up. Oh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, like I, I uh, like she, uh, like the host said, I, I kind of perform all throughout the Netherlands. It's, it's a lot of fun. I use a lot of tra public transportation in the Netherlands. I don't know if you guys use that here a lot. You guys use public transportation? Yeah. yeah. Okay, some common folks in here. Some Americans in the back, they're like, fuck no. <laughs> SUVs all the way, baby. Cool. Got the, got the fucking, you know, the, the Lincoln Navigators, whatever. I love it, love it. Cool, so, no, but like, you know, I feel like public transportation can be really weird, right? You see a lot of weird people on public transportation. You're like, eh. yeah. You might be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you look very normal. I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but so like recently I was, I was on the train, I was catching a bus, and uh, like, I, I'm in Amsterdam, right? So, you know, be careful. So like I, I get off the train, I gotta run to the bus, gotta make the bus. So I'm doing a little cool jog. I'm like, hey, just catch the bus. This is me. This is right. This is my speed, just being real cool. Now behind me, there's this dude who came from the train, haul assing to catch catch the bus. Right? He's like, I need to catch this bus. Right? He's fucking losing his mind. And again, this is Amsterdam. Could be on something. Right? And so I step into the bus. And I asked the bus driver, I was like, hey, I'm going to this stop, is this where you go? He's like, yeah, of course. And as I was talking to the bus driver, the guy steps into the door frame, and he's standing there, just out of breath, locking eyes with me, right? So you're me right now. And I'm the dude. He's like, kind of smiling. He goes, shit! Shit! I'm like, fuck me! Right? This is Amsterdam, shit goes down. So I'm like, okay, let me go to the back of the bus. Let me get away from this dude as far as possible. Please don't sit next to me, right? Obviously the guy comes fucking right at me, right? So he's walking down the aisle of the bus. And again, he's like, <sighs> walking towards me as if like we're, you know, we've been, like, we're old buddies. We haven't seen each other in 20 years. It's like, finally, right? Like sort of that vibe. So he's walking up to me, he's like, <sighs> shit. <laughs> I almost missed this box. What the fuck? Whatever drugs he's on, I need that shit. Right? That is some mind blown shit over nothing, right? Like how would you lose your mind over almost missing a bus? Unbelievable. Um, somebody, what? Oh, never mind. I thought somebody's like, oh, that's kind of normal. <laughs> like, what's your standards? Uh, <laughs> Cool. Guys, I, I feel like generally I'm a, I'm a pretty cool dude, you know, like I, I have that little cool job, like when I catch the bus, like, hey, I'm just catching the bus, man. But I feel like I have this tendency sometimes to make situations a little bit more awkward than they need to be. Do you ever do that? You feel like, we like, oh my God, did that just come out of my mouth? Really? Yeah. Right? Yes, you have. I was like, I just did that just now. <laughs> but so recently I was at a show, like during intermission, I had to run to the bathroom. And I step into the bathroom, it was very small. There was only two urinals in one stall. And so the you know, two urinals were already taken. So I'm like, okay, I'll use the stall. I'm more of a stall guy myself. I like to sit down when I pee. <laughs> Who's with me? <laughs> Women, let me hear ya. <laughs> yes, bitches. Mm. It's much cleaner. I want to see some women look at their men like, see, he gets it. <laughs> Your aim is shit. Right. So anyway, so I opened the stall door and there happens to be a guy already in there. Like, he just forgot to lock the door. You know, and he hadn't even noticed me. You know, so he was standing up, his back was facing me. And this could have been the situation. Could have fucking left it at that. I could have just closed the door. I could have waited till the guy came out. But I chose to go. Nice. <laughs> without a single fucking plan of how to get out of that situation, right? Zero, nothing, right? So I feel like even better, even better than that, if I'd have opened the door, I would have been like this. Chatbot. 
step in there, close the door behind me, lock it. I was like, hey, do you mind if I join? This is the best way to make a new friend, isn't it? Look, our streams are already crossing. That's why this guy draws the line. He's like, fuck no. Crossing streams, absolutely not, no. It probably happens, guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Um, who's, who's married in here? Ooh, okay. It's like, yep, we are married. Yeah. Cool. A lot, of, a lot of married people in here? Are you married? Good. Good, 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 good. I'm willing to, uh, you know, I'm in lunch stool. My wife is back in Amsterdam, so I'm cool. Come see me after this. No. Uh, I, uh, I've been married to a, a Finnish uh, lady for five years. We recently celebrated our five-year anniversary. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do we have any Finns in the house by any chance? Obviously not. Cool. Yeah, they're not fun. They're not very fun. <laughs> I know. I've been married to one. And so... <laughs> So, if you've never heard a Finnish person speak, allow me to kind of introduce you to the, oh, the auditory experience, right? the, 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 the audio, audio bouquet that comes out of a Finnish person's mouth. So, you know, like Scandinavians, you might have heard them speak, they speak with a little bit of a melody, it's very pleasant, it has a little bit of a, you know, an upward melody. Now, Finns speak without any emotion, right? It is completely flat, just like this. There is no change of rhythm or any sign of life whatsoever, right? So, so a Finnish person could be giving you great news. It could be like, you just won the lottery, $25 million. And you as a Finn would go, oh my God. <laughs> Fucking losing your mind, right? Now, it could also be bad news. The doctor could come up to you and be like, uh, we are so sorry, we did everything we could, but your mother died. And you as a Finn would go, oh my God. <laughs> Same thing, right? <laughs> so when my wife comes home after day's work, she's like, hello, honey. I am home. Oh great, you're gonna marry a fucking robot. <laughs> Oh, Roger, oh, Roger. You guys know what happens there, of course. I am fixing an engine. Yeah. Fixing an engine? You could call it that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to think I know how to fix engines, if you know what I'm saying. I like to know how to think I, I know how to please a woman. Right? Now, uh, one month, like, so we've been together for five years, uh, married for five years, been together for ten. One month into our relationship, I was like, it's time to meet the family, right? This is it. One month, we're cool. We're, we're, we're settled, right? So uh, we were both home in, in Europe uh, during the time. So we went to school in the U.S., uh, came back here. So um, I went to Finland to meet her family. Now, uh, her father is Bulgarian. So she's half Finnish, half Bulgarian. Her father doesn't speak English very well. He speaks broken English, which is fine. I just didn't know him at the time, hadn't met him yet, and I was going to meet him later that day. So I, I got to Finland, and they're like, Welcome, Roger. It is so great to see you. I'm sure. Yeah, it sounds like it. And so we had a fantastic day, and at some point they're like, Oh, we're going to treat you to a great Finnish tradition. Sauna. They're really selling it to me, right? They're really trying. Like, and I'm like, Oh my God. Right? Really trying to connect. And so, you know, they're like, the women go with the women, and the men go with the men. Now, the women went first, obviously, very fine. And so I was like, well, you know, there's a bunch of guys here, there's uncles, there's nephews, whatever, so we'll go together. And, you know, as the, as the women come out, the, most of the guys were like, man, we're not, really, we're not really up for it, we're not gonna go. So it turns out it was just gonna be me and my father-in-law, who I hadn't met yet. So this is me walking to the to the sauna now. Like he's standing there already, and my, my father-in-law kind of speaks English like a like an Eastern European car salesman would. He's like, hey, come, come, my friend, come. <laughs> this right here, this Mercedes, 1985, just for you. Come, come, come. Don't look in the back. It is fine. No worries. Right? It is missing one tire, but you can buy it. It's fine. So that kind of, you know, that's his English. And so like, I walk up to the sauna, he's like, hello, oh, Roger, come, 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 please, come, come. My name is Julia. He shakes my hand, and he's like, take your clothes off. <laughs> oh my God. Now, what's great for me is that my father-in-law is very religious, very into the Bible, so he's like, hmm, I've got this kid here. 
Let's talk about Jesus. Let's do this. In the sauna. So I'm in the sauna. First day in Finland. First time meeting my father-in-law. Sweating my ass off. Looking at my father-in-law's balls. <laughs> learning about Leviticus. Well, fucking fantastic. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, ginger ale. Very good. Who's, who's drinking ginger ale tonight? Mm -mm. Just me. Cool. Yeah, I'm easing into the night, guys. I'm... I'm, I'm Going for pints later, but I'm easing into it with my ginger ale, yeah. Now, I'll, I'll give you guys one more example, actually, of how, uh, um, how I can make situations a little bit more awkward than they need to be. So I worked at a, a food court in, at a school in California. I went to school out in California. And, uh, you know, we made sandwiches, we made pizza, a whole bunch of stuff. And so one day they had me at the sandwich counter. It wasn't very busy. I'd been there for about a year, so it felt very comfortable, right? Like after, you know, a year at work, you're like, hey, you're just cracking jokes with your, with your coworkers. And so this guy walks up to the counter, and the place is a very normal order. He's like, hey, I'd like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, please. Totally normal. Again, this could have been the situation. Could have fucking left it at that. Made the, made the sandwich. Sent him on his way. But I chose to go, PB and jizzle. Coming out. <laughs> and I walk over to the sandwich counter, and he's like, uh, 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 I don't want jizz in my sandwich, my guy. And I'm like, why not, man? It's fresh. I'll just whip it up for you. Again, where he draws the line. He's like, fuck no. Anything that comes out of a penis, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I didn't know what jizz was at the time. I was still learning English. <laughs> Just trying to be cool. Jizz, oh, cool. <laughs> um, guys, I want to switch gears with you guys a little bit. A lot of, a lot of uh, Americans in the house, right? A lot of, we have some, a mix on like English. We have some Germans still, right? Or did the Germans leave? <laughs> It is seven o'clock. I'm going to home. <laughs> to your, your German? Okay. Willkommen, I guess. Uh, I, yeah, anyway. Cool. I'm welcoming you into your towns. I can. Um, I want to I wanna switch gears with you guys. I feel you're ready. I feel you're liquored up. We're cool. We're friends, right? We're, we're, we're comfortable with each other. We're comfortable, right? Oh, we're real comfortable. Yeah. So, uh, what? We can, oh, we can definitely hang out, buddy. Cool. Yeah. Weren't, you, weren't you the one who said, once it's in, you like it? I mean, I guess I can learn something from you. So, anyway, talk to me after the show. <laughs> so, um, let's, let, let's just switch gears here. Uh, Second World War. Oh. Bear with me, bear with me. It's fun, okay? So, you got, do you guys know how a lot of Germans fled to South America after the Second World War? A lot of Nazis, they were like, mm, our job is done here. Let's go on a hard-earned vacation. Worked so hard that I was wondering, like, what was the thinking behind that, right? Like, as if you imagine, like, poster boy Nazi, right? Like, a uh, blonde hair combed back. Mm, very tight. Intense look in the eyes. Clenched butt cheeks. Mm, very tight, right? So if you're gonna stand out somewhere like this person, it might be in South America, right? There's a lot of good rhythm. Right? Relaxed people, you know? Sun-kissed skin. And I'm not very relaxed, I'm a Nazi. That sort of contrast, right? So, I was wondering, like, you know, were they like, oh, I'll just slip away unnoticed. Oh, I'll just blend right in. Buenos dias. Mi casa aquí. I'll just call my hair to the other side. They'll never know. Yes, my, my name is Herman. No. Hermano Lopez. <laughs> now, you know, obviously the lesser known Nazis, like the Guntas, the Hermans, whatever, they could have gotten away with that, but the dude, right, the big dude, Hitler, couldn't have gotten away with that. Far too recognizable, right? I bet even if Hitler shaved, changed his appearance, say he shaved, quite a shave in history, right? Just done. Right? So, oh, I'll, I'll add a little aftershave, it stings a little. Yes. <laughs> or like say he, you know, say he went a little modern, got a man bun, right? Grow out his hair. I'll just work at a cafe now. I'll make cappuccinos. Right? Imagine getting a cappuccino from Hitler. Like, what the fuck is this? What? What's the problem? There's a swastika in my cappuccino, my guy. No, that is a swan, a four-headed swan. <laughs> okay, you really can't draw for shit, can you? <laughs> But so like, you know, say he, he, I don't know, he, the, the ruse works, he, he makes it to passport control in Argentina or something. I bet they, the officer at least would have been like, mm -mm -mm. aren't you Hitler? 
Nee, nein, nein, no. No, no I have always been a key. Hmm, bienvenido. So say like, you know, his plan works, he makes it to the streets of Buenos Aires, he's just walking around without a care in the world. I bet somebody would have stopped him at least and would have been like, hey, don't I know you from something? What is it? Is it the faith? Are you famous? And he's like trying to hide himself. He's like, hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Right? But the intense look in the eye, and like after a while his ego starts playing up, he's like, I am Hitler after all, I deserve to be famous. And the guy's like, didn't we go to school together or something? What is he? And then after a while he's like, oh my god. Oh, that's right! Charlie Chaplin! You look so much taller than in the movies, man. That's how it went. That's history right there. That was true. Uh, just real quick, just switching gears again. Who who here uses Airbnb? <laughs> clap it up. You can clap it up if you use Airbnb. Okay. I'm actually staying in an Airbnb uh, here in, in uh, the, not lunch, but in. Um, what? Lunch <laughs> time? <laughs> Absolutely not, man. What do you take me for? No, Mittelbrook. Anyway, uh, so, much better. I have no idea. So anyway, so like uh, uh, my wife and I actually hosted for a while. Did any Airbnb hosts in here? Very good. One. Yeah. I'm staying with her, actually. No lie. I'm actually staying with her. <laughs> so let's hope this is funny. Uh, so, so my wife and I actually hosted at our apartment for a while and uh, great experience except for one. I want to tell you about that now. So um, we had uh, two people res uh, reserve our room. It was Gary and Louise from Ireland. Any Irish people in the house? Any Irish people? You seem like you're not Irish. Like, no, 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 no. Like the owner. The owner. Very good. I'm not the owner. <laughs> uh, but so, um, so uh, Gary and Louise were coming to Amsterdam for their thirtieth for Gary's thirtieth birthday. So you think what better place than Amsterdam, right? So. At 6.45, on the day that they were supposed to check in, I get a call, and so I picked up and I said, hello, this is Roger, and I hear, ha! Airbnb! I'm like, well, it's Roger, but sure, Airbnb, fine. What's your address? I said, well, I should say it on the listing, but okay, and he hangs up. So I look at my wife, I'm like, well, this is really odd, right? This is strange. And so we did get nothing for a while, and then at 8 p.m. I get a text, and it says, would it be all right if we come tomorrow instead of tonight? We'll still pay for the night. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what you do, as long as you pay. Fine. So, so I said, sure, that's fine. And they had asked me what time they, they had to be at our place, and I told them 10 o'clock, because, you know, then we, go to, uh, we, we work in the morning, so, you know, we have to get up early, so please be there by 10. And um, at 9.45, I get another text. We've been robbed. I'm sorry, what, you've been, sorry, I texted him, you've been robbed, are you okay, what, what happened? I get nothing. A few minutes later, I get a text, like, if you've ever run your finger across a keyboard, it's just like a jumble of letters, right? I get that back. It says, we're at J-A-F-T-H hashtag 7 street. We do our best, we think it's a police station. So I ask him, like, hey, are you at a police station? Also, question, are you sober? And can you take care of yourself? About 15 minutes later, I get a text. Yes, we're sober. Found a taxi. We're on the way. As if nothing happened. <laughs> All right. That's how we do it in Ireland, I guess. And so, at 11.30 at night, finally a black cab like, pulls up out front of our building, and we see this little scene unfold. So, I, I see the back door open. A hand with a phone sticks out of the car, right? Blasting music. I'm not kidding. 11.30 at night. Blasting music. And Gary comes out of the car. And he starts looking around at the, uh, like there's a little line of bushes basically right out in front of our building. As if he's been to our place before and he lost something the last time he left. He's like, just looking around, playing music, looking around, just go, just straddling the little line of bushes. Now, Louise follows him out of the car, just looking. She, and she says, we're looking for 199. We're, we're looking for 199. Now, we're at 199. My wife was on the balcony. She's like, hey guys, we're up here. First floor up, just... Guys? And after a while, Gary looks up. First thing he says, Can I smoke on your balcony? <laughs> well, why don't you just come up? We'll get you set up. You've been robbed. You must be in shock, right? So we send him up, and I open our front door. They come up the stairs. I swear, this bouquet of 
alcohol, weed, uh, cigarette smoke, just wafts up the stairs, like two human ashtrays just sort of like waddling up the stairs. Right? And they walk into our apartment. First thing Louise says, we didn't know Amsterdam was such a dangerous place. Look, and Gary comes in after him, he's like, can I smoke on your balcony? That's what's on your mind right now? Right, so we show them to the room, and I, I, you know, I, I was like, hey, are you guys okay? They're like, yeah, we're, we're a little chicken. It's like, of course you are. So like, I, it's like, hey, this is the room, you, know, you got your towels, whatever. This is how the door works to the balcony. 15 seconds in, I look over to Louise. She's topless. Took her shirt off. Cool. I had no one to offend anyone. Apparently this is Irish culture. And so, Louise, like Tanya, my wife, is standing behind me. Louise asks my wife, hey, can I buy some underwear off you? <laughs> We've been robbed. We have nothing. Now, guys, we're homeowners, so my wife is like, underwear's on the house. <laughs> and Gary, the old opportunity, is like, yeah, yeah, me too, man. I need some shorts and a t-shirt. How about that? It's like, cool, man, just have it, right? And so, uh, Gary asked me, he's like, hey, do you mind if we take a shower? That would be really helpful. Like, of course, you're really shaken up. And, but like, tell me, what happened in the city? And so Louise starts explaining. She's like, well, we have three joints. Well, let's start there. Three joints, were you trying to tranquilize a horse? And then we had some beers. It's like, okay, we're mixing now. This is great, this is good, right? And then Gary and I got into a fight in the bar, and then he rushed out. I followed him, and then when we came back 15 minutes later, our backs were gone. So yeah, no shit. You weren't robbed, you donated your bags. Right? They belong to the people of Amsterdam now. Right? And so Louise is like, oh, I don't know what happened. I said, I know what happened. Anyway, so like, she goes into the shower first. I kid you not. Within two minutes of her being in the shower, we hear this. And it's Louise having a terrific orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet! Yeah. No, it was Louise being so high, so off her rocker that she couldn't figure out the little temperature valve on the shower, right? It was ice cold. She was taking an ice cold shower. Now, Gary, the gallivanting gentleman that he is, puts both of his hands against the bathroom door, puts his forehead against the door, and he goes, It's all right, sweetheart, the cold water's good for you, Louise. It is! And Tiny and I look at each other, we're like, We've got ourselves a fucking problem. <laughs> this is bad, right? And so Louise comes out of the bathroom, and she's like, I'm really tired, I'm gonna go to bed. It's like, of course, we understand. Now she walks away from us, and she is wearing nothing but Tanya's t-shirt, and the bottom half of her ass is just showing, as she's just sort of waddling to the, back of the bedroom. Gary follows her, obviously, nice ass. Um, we're like, yeah, we got ourselves a problem, right? So Tanya and I were in the kitchen. We're like, we can't, we can't give them our key. This is no, we can't do this. Like, you know, we, this is too dangerous. No way. Like, I'm not gonna leave them by, like, by themselves. Now we go to bed. I know what I look like. You know, six one, one eighty five, whatever. Like for the Europeans, uh, like one eighty six, eighty some kilos. I work out, but I barricade our door. Right? I fucking, I put a whole bunch of shit in front of our door. I leave it open. Just a crack, I, so I can hear them approach, but they can't just barge in, right? So I'm like, there's knives in the kitchen. This is not the end of us, right? This is not it. So we go to bed. By now it's like 1-ish, 1 1.15. 20 minutes later, there's a knock on our bedroom door. Who else but Gary? Right? And I, I walk to the door. I'm like, dude, you can't do this. This is, you, 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 like, we have to go to sleep, whatever. You think. So I open the door. He puts his phone in my face, and it says 112, which is our 911, the emergency number, right? Has it in my face, and I'm like, what the fuck? Gary, what's, what's going on? And he says this, I've got head pains. <laughs> Who calls it head pains? <laughs> I need a head doctor. <laughs> Who the fuck calls it a head doctor? Right? So I take the phone and I, I do my best to like, you know, kind of like translate what he says to the lady speaking in Dutch. And I follow him to the bedroom and he, you know, he's like holding, clutching his chest or whatever. He goes into the bedroom, I follow him in. Louise is in the bed laying down with the sheet strapped around her face, and she go, she's looking up at the ceiling, and she goes, we're Gary and Louise, and we've got mental health problems. <laughs> what in the entire fuck is happening? What is going on, right? So an ambulance shows up, the ambulance people come in, they, triage, they start triaging uh, 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 Gary, and he starts listing the laundry list of medication he's on, right? Lithium, 
a lazapan something, another zapine, whatever, because Gary is bipolar, and he had the foresight to stay off his meds because he was like, I'm gonna go to Amsterdam to smoke a lot of weed, and my medication will interfere. This is fucking fantastic. Now, when he said, I'm on lithium, Louise went, I didn't know you were taking that. So she was unaware, right? They've been together, she's unaware. And then she, Louise, turns to the ambulance people, she's like, well, I am also on medication. Uh, I work in healthcare myself. Uh, I'm schizophrenic. Oh, this just keeps getting better. Every turn, keeps getting better. Right, so Gary's like, I need to ride to the hospital to get my medication. Now, these are Dutch ambulance, uh, whatever, first responders, very blunt. They're like, it doesn't work that way. We're not a taxi. He gets frustrated. They pull me aside. They're like, he's getting angry. What do you want to do? I'm like, call the cops now. Yeah. They call the cops. Cops show up. They get you know, Gary and Louise out. And the next morning, we get a call from a local hospital's psychiatric unit. Yes. Asking if we know anything about a gentleman named Gary from Ireland. <laughs> Never met him. <laughs> no, we're like, yes, of course. Like, they were supposed to stay with us. We kind of, you know, anyway, brush it off. It's like, they were supposed to stay with us. Turns out all he had with him was a little note with uh, my wife's name on it and our phone number. That's it. And so my wife's talking to the, uh, to the lady from the hospital, and she's like, well, how about Louise? How's, how's his girlfriend? And the lady goes, Louise? <laughs> no, there's no Louise. He was by himself. Oh, what the fuck happened to Louise, right? <laughs> they were taken by the cops, what the hell? Now, we didn't find out until one week later when a review popped up on our account. Oh, yes. Gary and Louise. Here's the review. It says, wonderful people. Obviously. Very hospitable. The bed was all right, it was an air bed. Like, okay, now we have five star standards, really? Right? But we can't give more than four stars because the shower was absolutely shit. Thank you guys, my name is Roger Back. Have a wonderful night, thank you, appreciate it. Oh, this is a crazy mother.